Hi, I'm Mike. Welcome to my Waffle Square, where I obsess about things and you get to benefit from it. In this video, I reveal a serious overheating issue I discovered with the Insta360 1X 360-degree camera. If you have any sympathy for the personal health risks I endured while making this video, or you find it helpful, will you please give it a thumbs up? Either way, let's get going. Thanks, buddy. So, this is not an unboxing video. This is actually a video explaining why I am returning for the second time the uh, Insta360 ONE X. So let me start off by saying I really like this little camera. It's been a lot of fun. I wish it worked better for what I needed. When I'm not running my business or running the kids around to their various sports activities, I'm making videos about those things. My original intention when I purchased this Insta360 was to film my daughter's uh, softball activities. And I was gonna use this awesome invention, the Link Spider, and connect the Insta360 to it for a backstop camera. Now this is originally intended for the GoPro, but I thought it would be cool to connect the Insta360 to it to get uh, a 360 degree view of not only the game, but also fan reaction when exciting moments happen. Now at $400, it's a lot more expensive than the GoPro Hero 7 or the Osmo Action, but I thought we could do a lot more fun things with it. I also thought it would be fun to make time lapses with it when I was on the job site. And it's also made appearances in my um, House on the Mend YouTube channel videos as the wand cam. So with all that being said, why am I returning it? Well, I am convinced that there is a serious overheating issue with the Insta360 ONE X camera. I first became aware of this when we went to Denver for my daughter's softball tournament. I set it up with the Link Spider and did some video tests and I had pretty mediocre results with it trying to get it into a position where you couldn't see the chain link fence around it. In fact, when I shot the original videos, I had it uh, straight up and down like this and had to zoom in after the fact to try to get those um, pieces of chain link fence out of the screenshot. And when I did that, as you can see here, the image was really poor and wasn't even useful. I did some more thinking and some more testing and came up with a way to reposition the link spider like this diagonally so that I could get a better perspective. And I was looking forward to um, trying it out at some more games later on. The next day when we weren't actually playing any games, we went whitewater rafting. And there we shot this awesome video. The Insta360 ONE X has this accessory, the dive case, that you can open up, slide the camera in, because it itself is in no means weatherproof. And so I really like that video, except for the fact that you can constantly see uh, the bottom area of this dive case, and you're forever doing little edits and moving the camera around to try to minimize the amount of the dive case that you see. When I was editing that video, I kept noticing that I had to put in all these pivot points to keep the camera back on track where I wanted it. Otherwise, it just seemed to be wandering off uh, in one direction or the other. I didn't think much about it other than I thought it was a pretty arduous task and didn't really enjoy editing the video. It wasn't until we got back home and I started taking this on jobs with me that I started noticing the serious problem. Now the first issue came when I was assembling a barbecue grill. It was hot outside, but we were in the shade. This camera was never in direct sunlight. And as I went back and started editing the footage, I noticed that the camera was drifting off. But on this time, instead of it being a normal video, it was time-lapse, so it was very pronounced. So I ran it until the battery went dead and got about 34 seconds of footage at a five second uh, time lapse setting. So when I first looked at this video, I thought, well, perhaps when the battery started getting low, it couldn't properly operate the gyro inside. And I decided on the next job that I would hook up a um, external battery power pack to the unit and make sure it had a proper amount of power throughout the entire video. The next job I had was for a garage door opener install. And as you can see here, even with it hooked up to power, 
it took no time at all to start spinning. Oh, oh my goodness. I'm not sure how long I'm gonna be able to go on with this video. <laughs> it's making me nauseous. Oh. So I knew it wasn't a power issue. And at that moment, I decided to uh, test the camera out again when it was in my air conditioned car doing a simple driving time lapse. And it was no different. As you can see here, it just started to spin and spin again. In fact, from the moment the spin first appeared, every video after that was ruined and had spin. And in the time-lapse videos, you can't even connect a little point and, and have it stand still. It just keeps wanting to spin. If you do regular video, you can constantly put in pivot points like every couple frames and it'll sort of stay put, but it's really not usable anymore. So I contacted their tech support right off of the app. You hit the little uh, service button up at the top corner. And I started chatting with a very nice lady. I think they were on um, Asian time zone, like Ch China or something, because all the responses were like two o'clock in the morning from them. But nonetheless, they were very responsive. They first wanted to make sure that I had calibrated the uh, gyro and I already had done that uh, before I even contacted them. I went through all the settings and did a quick little calibration and that didn't change anything. And after I told them that and sent them some sample videos, they recommended that I send the unit back to Amazon and uh, either get a new one or get a refund. And I really liked the camera. I thought maybe it was uh, a one-off. I've had other uh, electronic devices that I've had to send back and get new ones be for various issues. So I didn't think too much about it other than maybe I had a lemon. So when I got the second 360 in the mail, which is this one right here, uh, that next weekend we went on a camping trip and it performed great. As you can see here, I made this cute little spinning flower scene with my daughter. And then we also put it back in the dive case and we shot a scene where we were taking little boats and floating them down this tunnel. And I made it look like uh, this was a view from the boat when in actuality, it was the camera inside the dive case floating down the uh, little stream. Everything went good. Those were short little segments of video and the camera never had a chance to overheat. But once again, when I got back to work and started taking it on jobs with me, that's when the trouble began. Now, before we go any further, let me say, I take care of my equipment. I have this little case for the camera. I also have this awesome little lens cap. It was never in direct sunlight. I never left it in my hot car. It came out of the car with me to the job sites. So, and in no way am I abusive to my equipment. So, so far this second unit had been operating pretty good and I went to my morning job where I assembled this cute little pink day bed inside of a nursery for a customer. And then the second job of the day was another garage door opener install. And as you can see here, within a few minutes of starting the camera with a time lapse of five seconds, it started to spin again. Oh my goodness, look at that, look at that. Oh. Thanks, buddy. Oh. Rick could vomit in middle age. Excuse me. So once again, I contacted tech support. So the second time around when I told them I was again having this issue, they responded, sorry for the inconvenience caused to you. We have feedback this problem to our R&D team for analysis. It is found to be caused by the continuous shooting or the high environment temperature, which made the camera to heat up, thus affects the recording of gyroscope data. To fix this video, Please disable the flow state in your studio or app before you export the footage. So I thought that was a pretty good tip. I went into the app, I turned off uh, flow state, and sure enough, when I reviewed the video in the app, it stopped spinning. But when I exported it to photos so it could actually be in a recognizable format, the spin was there just like before. 
Now, of course, I couldn't just live with my assumptions that it was overheated. I had to do some testing. So I have this little guy that uh, shoots a infrared uh, laser and can tell you the temperature of whatever it points at. So I decided to do some tests. Calculations show there is no greater goober than you. Brood, I'm just trying to be thorough. My developers have a stronger pin pan than you. Pin pan? All right, on with the test. So as you can see here, I lined up my old GoPro Hero 4, the Insta360 ONE X, and its replacement, the Osmo Action. And I set each one up for a five second time lapse. Now, the temperature inside the bathroom was 76 degrees. I turned all the cameras on, started the time lapse, and I came back every 15 minutes to take temperature readings with my little thermometer. Now, as you can see here in my notepad, within 15 minutes, the Insta360 was already up over 100 degrees, 103 degrees. And inside the bathroom, after 45 minutes, it reached its peak temperature of 113 degrees. Now compare that to the old Hero 4 that never got above, say, 105, 106 degrees, and the Osmo Action, which peaked out around uh, 99 de degrees. My two batteries for the Insta360 had been fully charged, but it was about a week ago, and it only lasted 75 minutes and then shut itself off. So I gave it about 30 minutes to cool off in the house, and then I went out to my garage, which was 89 degrees, and without the camera being in direct sunlight, I turned it on again and ran the same time-lapse test. This time, at 75 minutes, the temperature on the camera went all the way up to 133 degrees. It was seriously hot to the touch. And so since similar cameras in similar situations were not having the same effect, and the fact that Insta360's tech support told me that the uh, long filming or ambient temperature is causing the issue, I'm convinced there's a serious overheating problem with this camera. And therefore, it's not gonna work for my use, and I'm gonna send it back. Now, sure, it was hot out at these job sites, but I wasn't in direct sunlight, and really, I'm not all that tough. Just ask her. Strongest comparison is to the old people in the 1985 movie, Cocoon. Not that old, but Don Amici is a fantastic actor, so I'll take that as a compliment. Now to conclude, if you already own one of these cameras and you haven't had this issue, I'm really happy for you. They are a lot of fun. My recommendation would be to avoid long run times, and perhaps you won't ever develop this issue like I have twice. If you found this video helpful, will you please give it a thumbs up? It really helps the algorithm to start suggesting this video to more people so they can be made aware of this issue. I'd also really like to hear your comments and experiences with this camera. Have you had the same issue? If so, were you able to rectify it in the software? Please let us know in the comments below. Well, I got nothing more to say. I guess it's time to end this video. Think that is a good idea. Oh, really? You like one of my ideas? You are the only one who watches your videos to the end. All right, I'm done with it.